Council, oh, wait, glasses. Good evening, everyone. We're uh, back to do the Committee of the Hall for Tuesday, February 18th. I see we have quorum. No one left us. Adoption of agenda. Thank you. Uh, motion put forward by Councillor Wink that the agenda for the February 18th, 2020 regular meeting of COW be adopted. Any questions, changes on it? Not seeing any, ask the vote. All those in favor? All those against? Thank you. Motion carries. Uh, at this time, I have to ask uh, any councillor have a pecuniary, pecuniary interest or in general nature thereof to declare. Don't see any. Uh, ask the clerk to please note that. Now we go into department reports. And we have a motion put forward by Councillor Hahn that can committee receive report 20. No, shall we be reading this now? Or yes, we, no, no, now no? then that opens discussion. Oh, okay. A committee receive report number 2020-14 and recommend to council that the land use study in appendix A be received for information and that staff be directed to fulfill the recommendations of the land use study. Uh, any questions? Oh, yeah, that's it. Any questions uh, on this? Uh, uh, council trophy. <coughs> After reading the report, I'm prepared to receive it, but I'm not prepared to fulfill the recommendations at this point yet. Okay. So I would ask council uh, to receive the report at this time, but not fulfill the recommendations. Okay. Uh, any other comments, questions on this? Uh, Councilor Clark. Yes, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, to, the, to the director. 5.61, you mentioned something about a 27% increase of uh, the of property, uh, an increase of 27.1 land increase of property values. I, I, I don't get that. I, you're telling me a person that has a home beside a cannabis processing their property is going to go up 27 percent like I, where do we find these numbers and are they numbers related back to the Niagara region and I know you talked about Leamington and Eastern Canada why can't we get facts from the Niagara region not from numbers that look good on a piece of paper uh, Mr. Mayor through you as indicated in the report um, these were statistics from the Rideau St. Lawrence region. Um, we don't have statistics for Niagara. There haven't been any studies done in Niagara, so this is uh, what we could find as comparators. Okay, through you, through you Mr. Mayor. Um, how much input did the CCC have with this report? Uh, Mr. Mayor, through you, this is a staff report. Uh, certainly, the, um, there's a lot of uh, conversations and discussions that we had with the CCC relating to the various impacts, um, but it is a staff report. The report was shared with the CCC, and some members of the CCC provided comments to staff. Thank you. Any other questions? Councillor Trophy. Yes, in the report under other municipal approaches, page 13, section 4.0 to page 17, 4.13. Uh, it says a number of municipalities amended their zoning bylaw to provide regulations for medical marijuana production following legalization in 2001. And some of those municipalities, as well as others, are in the process of updating their regulations to include recreational cannabis production. Did you have the opportunity to review the proposed emission regulation for cannabis production and processing operations in Vancouver? Uh, Mr. Barrett, through you, there was a uh, proposed report that came out for Metro Vancouver back in, I believe it was May. 
last year. It's a discussion paper. We have certainly reviewed that, um, and uh, they have not adopted the recommendations in that discussion paper uh, as of yet. I got another question. Can cannabis production facilities be located in the town's industrial zone? Mr. Mayor, through you, currently the zoning uh, in the industrial area, which is that area along Weber Road, um, doesn't it permits industrial uses and warehousing and those kind of things. It doesn't permit uh, agricultural type uses or the growing of crops. What if cannabis was considered as uh, industrial use, like other municipalities? Um, Mr. Mayor, through you, if uh, that is something that Council wishes to do and include in the industrial area, that is a zoning, um, uh, would require an amendment to the zoning bylaw to permit that. Um, as we know, the provincial and federal government do recognize that the growing of cannabis is an agricultural use. Okay. One more question. Um, can you give me an example of case law that demonstrates municipalities cannot prohibit legal uses within their boundaries? That's on page uh, 22 of the report. Uh, Mr. Barrow, through you, I can't uh, quote the specific case law, but I'm aware of similar case law with respect to uh, adult entertainment parlors and uh, in the decisions with respect to those um, uses that's often been quoted um, i'm aware of that in the city of thorold for example there was uh, quite some time ago in the 80s a case uh, with regards to adult entertainment parlors there just one last one here on page 21 um the Ministry of Agriculture, Farming and Rural Affairs recommends employing the SMART principles to avoid and reduce nuisance complaints. SMART being a separation, magnitude reduction, alteration, reduction of occurrences, and timing. I, I agree with the separation. It says isolate buildings, livestock, and storage as far from neighbors as possible. Uh, but when we get to the timing part, it says contact all neighbors a few days in advance of events such as manure spreading to give them time to take appropriate action. The odor from cannabis sometimes will go up to two kilometers. Would it be feasible for these cannabis production uh, facilities to notify neighbors up to two or three, four kilometers away? <clears throat> Uh, Mr. Bear, through you, um, that example was uh, included in the report to give an example of how um, the ministry has provided some guidelines for other types of agricultural um, businesses and oper oper operations in terms of how they operate. So could there be a similar type of principle applied to cannabis? Um, certainly there have been discussions with the province of Ontario to look at um, similar types of uh, strategies to mitigate the adverse impacts of uh, cannabis uses in the agricultural area and on residential uh, properties and other sensitive land uses. And those have d been discussions that have, uh, have occurred, um, not only uh, with ourselves, but with other municipalities, and they continue to be ongoing with the province. Yes, through you, Mr. Mayor. Just wanted, how is the uh, short-term rental file going? I know it's not related to the cannabis, but can I not speak to it? Uh, I'll ask the clerk. I think we're, we're stretching the, uh, the agenda. We are talking about uh, a land use study for cannabis. Short-term. Isn't short-term a community planning and development? So through you, Mr. Mayor, we are on agenda item 4.1.1, yes. Cannabis Land Use Report. So that's the recommendation that's before the okay, committee Okay, thank you. Sorry. Uh, Council Link. So through you, Mr. Mayor, to the director. Um, recently, Council approved the construction of a home on Camborough Road. The bylaws indicated that a house could not be built within 300 meters of a poultry barn. 
A minor variance was granted for 200 meters and a notice of same was to be registered on title. Why is there a 300 meter buffer for, for a house being built near a poultry barn, yet the converse is not true when an ag building is built near an existing residence? Uh, Mr. Mayor, through you, that is the current clause in our zoning bylaw that deals with um, livestock, and it's only with respect to livestock operations. It doesn't address any other type of agricultural activity. Um, so if there are any other type of agricultural activity that needed a setback, um, we don't have any guidance material uh, related to that. The provincial uh, minister minimum distance separation guidelines as well only deal with livestock operations. So livestock are an agricultural operation as is cannabis so why why can't we apply the same? We're looking at at uh, I'm looking at the conclusion and and uh, in the report under 60 let me pull this up. Bear with me. We're suggesting 150 meters from a sensitive receptor is not a firm requirement by municipalities. I would like staff to present um, to council showing the impact of 200 meters and 250 meters from receptors. Has staff considered increased distances above the 300 meters um, for schools and parks? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, through you, if you look, there are a series of maps that's um, attached as the appendix to the report. Um, the last map deals with sensitive receptors, which is a 500 meter separation distance from sensitive land uses. This would also include uh, parks and so forth. Um, the second map uh, illustrates a 300 meters um, separation distance from sensitive land use receptors and the first map is the uh, 150 meter radius distance separation. And I understand the 150 meters, but residents are, are sensitive uh, receptors, schools are, parks are. What I'm suggesting is why are we not looking at schools and parks and have further distances from, from those areas? Uh, Mr. Mayor, through you, uh, when we look at the definition of uh, sensitive land use receptors, they include residences, schools, and parks. They don't differentiate between that. Um, each individual type of use, they um, aggregate sensitive land use receptors as one um, type of uh, distance separation. Any other questions? Well, not a question, but just a comment. I, I don't understand why we can't have extended uh, distances from schools and parks as totally different from, from residences. Uh, to you, Madam uh, Planning Director, would that need a, uh, is that something we could look into as a town, but that would have to be uh, uh, an amendment to our planning bylaws? Uh, no, Mr. Mayor, through you, that is something that we could consider or council could consider should it wish to do so. Okay, thank you. A any other questions to the report? Uh, council Trophy. This is not a question, it's just a comment. Um, in general, the, the report is uh, fairly good, so I want to thank staff um, for their time and effort that they put into this report. And uh, hopefully within the next couple of weeks, we can come together with the committee as well and uh, adjust the report and the recommendations that will suit all. So if I don't see any more questions, I would uh, uh, perhaps a couple of questions to the director. Um, it's, it's noted in your report that the order has been detected two kilometers from facilities and, and yet the 150 minimum setback uh, was addressed in your report. Uh, and I see Niagara on the Lake is proposing 1,500 meters. Uh, I was just wondering uh, uh, what your justification uh, would be for the, for the 150 meters, please. 
Well, Mr. Mayor, through you, the 150 meter um, distance separation is one component. Uh, we're also recommending that um, these cannabis, any new cannabis producers would do uh, odor modeling dispersion studies and have mitigation plans uh, in place, that those would be studies that we would require in advance of them being established so we can evaluate the impact. Um, the 150 is the minimum. And if there isn't any odor, uh, and if they can mitigate the impacts of the odor satisfactorily, then the 150 meter uh, setback would be appropriate. Okay. Thank you for that. I, I will note that the uh, a resident, and I think we can call him an expert, I won't name him. He, he works in business in odors. Uh, he's done a lot of uh, consultation with the uh, Cannabis Control Committee, and uh, and he has been on, I believe he spoke at the public meeting we had, and he thought that we should focus on exhaust systems more than on the uh, setbacks. So uh, uh, as, as the uh, planner, has, uh, director of planning has just stated, that if you have a system uh, that uh, that has been uh, qualified through a third party uh, regulation that and, and does indeed come up with, with a zero percent smell which uh, I think is attainable I, I've, I've talked to people in the industry then the setback uh, becomes uh, not as important uh, perhaps as, as we would think it is. Uh, the whole thing is can we reach the zero? That, that's the question. Uh, my only other comment is, uh, is on this industry, uh, talking to again people who, have, uh, who work in the industry. It is a young industry as such they do, they do not share data uh, and that's, uh, I think that's the one uh, that's the one thing that's holding this industry back and it's holding the town uh, communities back is that these, when somebody gets uh, to a point where they're, they're satisfied with their odor emissions, they don't have a magazine, a trade magazine that they say this is what works. They, they treat it as a, as, a, as a very big secret. And, and anybody who works in the industry has got to sign NDAs so they can't go to the next industry, oh, this works over for Joe Blow. They, 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 once somebody finds something at this stage of the game, unfortunately, they're keeping their secrets to themselves. Uh, you get an established industry. Uh, I was a dairy farmer. Uh, we, we always shared everything with the Department of Agriculture. Same thing with uh, any number of industries. But because this is a young industry, uh, and not and as to how many have actually hit the golden spot that uh, that they have no emissions, uh, it is a uh, it's a hard uh, industry to get information on. Um, other than that, that's my only comments. Any other questions, Council Fieldbrand? I'd like to make a comment from an engineering standpoint. Um, I was going to talk about this in waste, but I'm going to start here now. Our company which was a U.S. corporation, our, our, one of our expertise was uh, burning garbage. Uh, we, we burned garbage in New York City, Los Angeles, London, England, all over the world. We have a plant that I engineered. It was all under my engineering name in Niagara Falls, New York. I'm telling you, the air we got coming out of that plant was purer than the air we took in. I've offered my help in fe February to these cannabis companies for engineering expertise on the subject. They don't even want to talk to me. I, I can tell you that for a fact. I've called their office. I've called the MP to try and get a contract. I even had the municipal MPP call the owner's mother to try and get me to have contact with these people and give them some help. They're not interested. That's, so they're not spending the money, as far as I'm concerned, as an engineer, to get rid of order. Just a comment. So trophy. Yeah, I just want to comment to your statement, Mr. Mayor. When you talk about um, the setbacks aren't really a concern if the odor is taken care of. There's a lot of um, impacts in this community. One of them is the supplemental lighting that you'll see in the report. Um, we got noise impacts. We have traffic impacts, uh, groundwater, um, property value. All that plays a factor with the setbacks. If you have no odor, but you have a facility like this, 
100, 150 kilometers away, or 100, 150 meters away from you, you know as well as I do that there's two to 300 cars there parked in their parking lot, and uh, there's traffic, there's noise, et cetera. There's generators there. So the impacts or the, so, uh, the setbacks aren't just related to odor. Uh, and I thank you for that. I guess uh, I was referring to the minimum setback, which I would believe is, uh, is um, uh, uh, to, uh, regulated to the micros. Uh, I, I agree with you fully that when you get into the big ones, you're, you're exactly right. But if you're talking a micro uh, uh, grow, whether it be... I don't know, 20, I don't know what even our micro is, 40 plants, uh, that's, that's what I'm thinking of. I realize the concern is, as you say, the, the big boys. You're absolutely right. Well, yeah, it's just like when you say, as long as the odor is gone, the setbacks don't really mean anything. But it's not just about odor. So I just want to make that clear that everybody's on the same page. I, I, I concede the point. <laughs> okay, any other questions? Not seeing any. Then uh, we will call the vote on this motion. Oh, so. You have the motion here? Yes. So the motion is um, uh, put forward by Councillor Hahn that committee receive report number 2020 14 and recommend to Council that the land use study in Appendix A be received for information and that staff be directed to fulfill the recommendations of the land use study. Uh, so we already had the oh, councillor car or councillor uh, trophy. Yes, I would like to amend that, please, to say that uh, for council to receive the report and to work with the committee and uh, to fulfill the recommendations okay. or to look at the recommendations. No, no. okay. Oh, second. No, you don't need a seconder at uh, Cow. I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry. So yeah. to receive the report and work with the cannabis control committee to. To look at the recommendations or to come up with recommendations. Perhaps, uh, could you read that back to us, please? So, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, there is a motion by Councillor Cholfi <clears throat> that the report be received and that um, staff work with the Cannabis Control Committee to look at the recommendations and provide feedback. So can I take that to be referred to the Cannabis Control Committee? Is that the intent? Yes, please. Okay, so discussion, discussion on this amendment, if there is any. Uh, Councilor Wayne. Yes, through you, Mr. Mayor. Like, staff have done a wonderful job on this and um, the Cannabis Control Committee has been doing a lot of great work with respect to this. I don't think it's necessarily that they work with it. I think that the Cannabis Control Committee receives a report and they can provide input, but I think staff have and take that input under consideration, but it's not up to necessarily the Cannabis Committee to to recommend all sorts of changes. Just provide input, and then as a council, we receive that input. Any other comments? Any other comments? Oh. Yes. <clears throat> the whole intent here is not, is to receive the report this evening, is what I want. But when we say we're going to allow uh, staff to go ahead with the recommendations around this report, I'm not prepared to receive that tonight or to do that. So I would like staff to continue to work with the Cannabis Control Committee to come up with a set of regulations uh, that we agree on. Any other, any other questions or comments on this report before we call it the vote on the amendment? Not seen any. I will call. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, and what happens if there's an impasse between the committee and and staff? Cao. Uh, it is entirely foreseeable that there will be impasses as between the two. Uh, reasonable people can disagree in this world. Uh, seeing as the other. 
uh, cannabis item is refer is returned to this council on March the 23rd. The need for this council to take definitive action on March 2nd is, well, unclear to me at best. Uh, if this were to come back on March 23rd, that would give an opportunity for members of the Cannabis Control Committee to make uh, written or verbal, not for me to tell them how to uh, how to do their, their thing, but make some submissions uh, and the point in submissions on the work product that uh, uh, planning staff could could interact with. Uh, whether that changes anything or not, I, I can't say, of course, but that would provide that that opportunity, a, a period of time. We're, we're pretending as if March uh, there's some sort of magic to March 2nd, and there is not. Uh, seeing as we're going to be discussing cannabis on the 23rd, we may as well. That would give some time for that interaction and to see what comes out of that, be it fruitful or otherwise. Not seeing any other questions uh, rising. I will call the, I'm going to read this one more time. So you have an amendment? Oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry, yes, we're, we're doing the amendment, and uh, I guess the clerk has already read that. Uh, anybody want us to read it again, or everyone uh, happy with that? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, clerk? Uh, that committee received the report and refer it to the Cannabis Control Committee and to permit the Cannabis Control Committee to provide feedback um, on the recommendations. Okay, Council? Yeah. Oh. Okay, uh, any other questions on that? Then before we forget it, we'll uh, ask the vote. All those in favor of the amendment? Okay, and any uh, opposed? Okay. Now, we vote on the uh, uh, that committee, VVVC Report 2020-14, and recommend to Council that count the, the land use study. It's, 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 it's going to be the motion as oh, so this, now. Oh, okay, oh, okay, so we just have to do that. Okay, I'm sorry. So on the motion as amended uh, that we just voted on, uh, we vote again. Uh, any discussion on the amendment? I, probably not. Okay, so all those in favor on the motion as amended, uh, uh, all those in favor. Yeah, and any though any opposed? Not seeing any. The uh, motion passes. Ah. Okay, I keep losing my pen. Thank you. And now. Um, <coughs> Um, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Council Court. Yes, Mr. To you, Mr. Mayor, to the clerk. Can we go back to 4.1 then? And I could ask the question about short-term rentals. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, there is no report or there is no um, monthly planning report to um, provide that opportunity listed on tonight's agenda. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, excuse me, can I ask where are we? Corporate services? Yes. Oh. We have before us a motion put forward by Councillor Hahn that committee received report number 2020-0016, Corporate Services, and recommend to Council that Council receive report number 2020-0016, Corporate Services, for information. Any questions or comments on this report? Councillor Wink. So through you, Mr. Mayor, to the Treasurer, and you're probably waiting for, for this question. Uh, did we receive the uh, transit grant by year end? Uh, through, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, no, we haven't. So has there been any input uh, provided the reasons why we didn't receive that grant from the province? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, we issued our report. There was an amendment to the report, and after that we had to wait six weeks. So we're just in that waiting period. Okay, but, thank you. But um, we should be receiving the funds any day now. Okay, thanks. Uh, 
Clark. Yes, through you, Mr. Mayor, to the Treasurer. It, would that have an effect on the new contract we s with the uh, transit with the Niagara region? Because we quoted them a price with the rebate. Now, if we don't get the rebate, are we still obligated to pay the $70,000? Or we reduce that price? Okay, sorry, I didn't know if Becky was like uh, <laughs> No, you yeah, go. <laughs> so through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, with regards to the, um, the transit grant, um, the Director of Recreation, Culture and Wellness, and the CEO and I spoke to the ministry folks with regards to the grant, and they were supportive of the partnership with the region. So that won't have an impact at all uh, with regards to that. Uh, our discussion with the Niagara Region is that whatever the net amount that we have in our budget, whatever it's the town is paying for the transit, it's not going to exceed that. So that's the agreement, what, regardless of what happens with grants or anything else. So no additional budget impact for 2020. Any other questions? Oh, Councilor Trophy. Yeah, in regards to uh, the MCC report, the financial report 4.2.1, um, note number five there, it said that uh, we're going to be under budget for 2019 for the advertising costs. Can I get an explanation on that one, please? Through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, with regards to the, uh, this is the arena advertising. So we have an agreement uh, with our current um, uh, contract that we have that it's 30000 a year. But what we have is we have um, a timing issue of when that started. So it started in July of the year and it goes into May of the following year. So it's just a timing issue. Like we will, be, we will get the, uh, the funds, but we're still transitioning between uh, the first year when we when we started. I don't know if you want to add, add anything else to that, Vicki. Okay. So through you, Mr. Mayor, um, the actual contract is from uh, basically July to June. So it's 2019, 2020, started in 2018, 2019. So you're half of a year difference. Thank you. And my next question there would be, uh, this one might be similar, just not sure what it is. Uh, puck boards cost. What are the puck boards? Through you, Mr. Mayor, it's um, actually, um, it's a surface that we use along the boards of the, um, the arenas, as well as we use it uh, there's an area that the um, we have an area that kids can use for um, stick and puck that's off the surface and we've had to purchase the puck boards to protect the area so the puck boards that we're talking about they're on the inside of the arena like are they protecting the what do they protect no so the puck boards are protecting the wall outside of the the surface of the ice thank you yeah. Any other questions? Oh, Councilor Hahn. Um, I'm just looking at the MCC uh, information. And just with regards to the telephone, um, I noticed there's a note down below for the, because the, uh, we're at 200 and something percent over uh, actual to budget. It just seems, uh, have we researched other companies? I mean, there's, uh, whether it's Cogico, whether it's Bell, um, it just seems an exorbitant amount of money to spend, and I realize there's elevators and they have to have a dedicated line, but um, are, we, are we looking at this? Because even now it's estimated at 15000 for the year, but we budgeted four and change. Yep, so through you, Mr. Mayor, it is the elevator cost that's causing uh, the original uh, budget variance, so um, that's something that uh, we have to put the telephones in the elevator as a safety feature, so... Um, and then the other one is Bell. I mean, we're using the Bell lines 
with regards to that. So I don't think there's anything else we can do with that. So we've costed it out between Kajiko and Bell? Uh, I could follow up on that, but I think we have to use Bell for it for the safety of the elevators. I can confirm that and get back to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh, Council Wink. So through you, Mr. Mayor, just as a matter of housekeeping on uh, Appendix 2 under expen expenditures, uh, on page 1 you show animal control as note 8, and right below it, general administration, you show the note as 8. So animal control should be note 7. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you for that, Councillor. Any more questions? Comments? Not seeing any, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? All those against? Motion carries. A motion put forward by Councillor Hildebrand. That committee received report number 2020-0002 for information and that committee recommend that council approve the 2019 Pelham Distribution System Summary Report. Any questions, comments on this report? Not seeing any. I'll uh, call the uh, vote. All those in favor? All those opposed? Thank you. Okay. Do you, oh, Mr. Mayor, yes. to the clerk? So we can't ask any questions at 4.3 for the fire and bylaw service or 4.4 because there's no reports? I, I don't get this. I, that means they don't put a report in, we, we can't ask questions. I'll let the uh, clerk comment on that. Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, I believe the councillor may be referring to the previous monthly CAL reports that were submitted. Those are now being prepared on a quarterly basis. So there'll be a report from each department head on a quarterly basis. The reports that are listed on the agenda right now are topic specific. I don't agree with it, but so before we had once a month, we had the department's report on a regular basis. Now it's going to be every quarter, so it would be four times a year. Through you, Mr. Mayor, that's correct. Uh, the CAO may wish to have some additional comments, but that's uh, that's the way moving forward. Through you, Mr. Mayor, if I'm not mistaken, I wasn't aware of it, and I don't think most of us wasn't aware of that change. Uh, perhaps uh, clarity from the CAO? Well, I think the main complaint at the moment is in inability to address an item that's not on the agenda and I can only say that the reason the municipal act functions as it does and this municipality functions as it does is that members of the public have a lot of interest in the items on the agenda uh, they knew for instance cannabis was to be discussed tonight and a lot of people came out to hear about that gypsy moth is coming up they're identifiable humans sitting in the audience because they want to hear about that the reason we don't bring up short-term accommodation this evening is because there are dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of people in this community interested in that, and we don't have any materials prepared. They should be able to, the reason we publish agendas ahead of time is so that people who are interested in a given item can come out and, or log in online, as the case may be, but can interact and hear what's being said about the item. So that's the substantive reason why we only talk about the items on the agenda. It isn't a matter of control, it's about giving the community the opportunity to engage with whatever they want, issue they want to engage on. Uh, beyond that, more generally, this council and this committee has extremely long, you have a very ambitious, uh, admirable 
frankly, list of items you want to get to. This community has a number of significant issues. We go to the max and we extend beyond the maximum meeting time multiple times a month. There isn't room for more reports. Those reports take hours and hours and hours of senior staff time. And to go from a monthly report that has only very minor statistics down to a quarterly is actually a very good management tool because we spend more time writing about the things we did for two weeks. Remember, there's a two-week lag when it comes to us publishing things. So giving you monthly reports means that every sort of two weeks later, we're tr starting to write that again. That delivers almost no value. If we're aware that there's something you want to speak on, all that's required is any one of you indicating by phone call or email to myself, there's something you'd like to talk about on a future agenda, and we will put that on the agenda. We are here to work for you and to be responsive. Uh, but, but structurally, we have to make best use of the time available to us. And we already have these overwhelming, very lengthy agendas, which is why uh, we've made the decision to come every other month, or uh, quarterly, every three months really, with the area updates, but Routinely, we have more than enough substantive work to keep us going for a very long period of time. Thank you. Councillor? <laughs> Through you, Mr. Mayor, to the CAO. So that means citizens would not, if we have questions, it would take uh, next month or next quarter to answer those questions. And I know you mentioned about emails. So moving forward, if Ron Corr wanted a question about short-term rentals, how would he go about it? <laughs> There we are, 50-50. Uh, well, there are multiple ways to accomplish that if it's uh, simply a relatively innocuous or, or quick question, of course, merely contacting either the relevant director or myself uh, can, can get that answered. If, uh, if we're looking for a more substantive report, i.e. using a lot of staff time, staff time being a resource for which the community pays uh, us in salary, then uh, either the notice of motion process is how council forces items to be on an agenda. And you're right, that does take two meetings to uh, the provision of the notice of motion and then ultimately are discussing it and a debate amongst yourselves and uh, council approval. That's one mechanism you have to force anything on the agenda, if that's your preference. Uh, but generally, just conversations to understand when things are coming up. We do, in fact, uh, you get the minutes of our meetings, you understand that we're working on things, you refer items back to staff and you typically give us deadlines and uh, we actually are in the habit of meeting those deadlines so typically you know when you're going to hear more on any given topic um, that is our system anything further on that council report no thank you uh, anything further on this report Oh, I haven't read it yet? Okay, here we go. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. Motion put forward by Councillor uh, Stewart. The Committee of the Whole receive report number 2020-0017, Town of Pelham Gypsy Moth Policy, and the 2020 Gypsy Moth Management Options, and that a Forestry Health Reserve Fund be established and the necessary bylaw be prepared and that Committee of the Whole recommend that Council approve the Public Works Gypsy Moth Management Policy S801-14. Comments and questions on this report? Councillor Hahn. Just curious, as far as uh, referencing other areas, other municipalities, other provinces, um, has that been done? And if so, is there a list or did I overlook where other municipalities we've looked into? In other words, are we reinventing the wheel? Has this been done before in other places? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> um, staff have been in contact with other municipalities, uh, such as Hamilton, Mississauga, Burlington, and <clears throat> to the best of our knowledge, there is not one specific policy that deals strictly and only exclusively with gypsy moths. Um, the other municipalities have integrated pest management policies that they use to control 
outbreaks of invasive species, but uh, the town of Pelham is actually uh, one of the first municipality, if not the first municipality, to have a, a policy that specifically deals with the gypsy moth issue. But there has been consultation with other municipalities that do have issues with gypsy moths, and, and we've used that research with working with those other municipalities to develop uh, the policy. Thank you. Well, that answer your question, Councillor? Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Councillor Hildebrand. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so if I'm reading your report right, you're suggesting that we have the cost of spraying distributed, distributed over the entire tax base. Is that correct? Through you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> um, when we were writing this report, um, the purpose of the report was to bring forward a, a policy that would guide staff and, and guide the town in how we deal with the gypsy moth infestation issue. Um, as you're aware, in the fall, we did retain the services of a consultant to do an infestation survey for us. Um, once the, the leaves came down in the late fall, <clears throat> they worked through December, January uh, to do their field work and try to get a picture of what the infestation looks like in 2020. Um, at the time of writing this report, we've received information from the consultant in the form of a draft report, um, which kind of laid out what we were looking at in 2020. So we have a, a budget that's approved, current budget that's approved to deal with the gypsy moth issue of $150,000. That includes the cost to do the spraying. It also includes the cost to do the administration of the program itself. So we have roughly $110,000 to conduct a spray program. We set thresholds for infestations uh, that, are, that show up in the policy of 2,500 egg masses per hectare. The initial, the draft report that we received um, indicated that um, there was substantially more land that exceeded those minimum thresholds. So the infestation in 2020 uh, could be, is expected to be um, similar to 2019. And without having this information in the past, we, uh, the, the information we have now in 2020, the scientific approach that we've used, kind of gives us a better, more reassurance of what the issue is we have on hand. And unfortunately, um, the infestations are quite substantive in the town of Pelham, both inside the rural, inside the urban areas and in the rural areas. <clears throat> so the idea was we, with the information we received from the draft report, uh, we wanted to bring to council um, basically that, bring, bring to you the findings of, of, of bioforest work and kind of what, the, uh, what, the, um, what we're facing in 2020. So in the report, we laid out some options for council to consider um, and debate with respect to how we as staff and, and as a town move forward with respect to a, a successful program in 2020. Councillor uh, Duncan? Oh, okay. Uh, Councillor Corr. Yes, through you, Mr. Mayor, through the Treasurer. Could we afford uh, option number three? And, and if we, is there a way of budgeting the one point something million dollars? Or is there other ways of financing? So through you, Mr. Mayor, um, if we go with option number three, which is uh, an additional $930,000 of cost to the approved 2020 budget, it will be uh, a tax increase of 6.64% on top of the 5.95% that has been already approved for 2020. So this will be a total of 12.59% to the tax base from last year. Uh, what it represents is that for the average household to cover the additional 930000 for the gypsy moth spray is approximately $118 for the average household. And would that be a once, once 
once or twice or once a year or twice uh, in a year. You, through you, Mr. Mayor. Or, um, if Councillor feels that this is a cost that is going to be incurred for this year, then we can add it for this year when we do the 2021 budget. We will reevaluate to say how much money do we want to put into the Gypsy Moth line. Right now, the existing 2020 budget has $150,000. So if we want to go to a million and 40,000, then we're going to have to increase the tax base. If in 2021 we think $150,000 is sufficient, then we drop the, um, the, 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 the tax increase. We would drop it by the 6.64 from this year. Councilor Through you, Mr. Mayor. Please uh, explain to me what is the average house price you're basing that tax increase on? Uh, we're basing it, I don't have it in front of me, but this is on the assessed house value, not the house price. There's a difference between a market value and an assessed value. So the assessed value, I think it's approximately $350,000. Oh, uh, Councillor Wink. However, we have new homes being built in this area and their assessed value is, is closer to market value. And a lot of those homes are eight, nine hundred thousand dollars $900,000. So you're looking at probably triple the cost of a tax increase to them as what's being uh, presented here. <clears throat> just, just a comment, you don't have to comment back on that. Um, in option number two through you, Mr. Mayor, um, does staff have any indication as to where the 90 acres of private property is located that would be sprayed? Through you, Mr. Mayor, <clears throat> the infestation surveys that we received, uh, do I identify um, areas where that 90 hectares could be sprayed? Um, what the report did was basically looked at the whole town uh, looked at urban areas, looked at rural areas. <clears throat> um, at this point in time, staff as well as, the, as well as the consultant have not developed any spray blocks. So we have not developed any any type of, uh, of spray program as of yet. So the 90, um, approximately 90 hectares of uh, property that would be sprayed privately, um, at this point in time, we haven't decided that. Go ahead. So through you, Mr. Mayor, how long would uh, that determination uh, be? So is it a month, two months to do the work to determine what gets sprayed? or Because we're pushing up again to deadlines. I think it's got to be sprayed in May. Correct. Uh, right? Through, through you, Mr. Mayor, that's correct. Um, so the spraying will take place uh, during two applications. It'll be uh, taking place in late May and early June, uh, weather dependent. Um, so as, as of right now, um, we do have a, a draft. We have actually have a final report now in hand, staff, which we will be bringing to council on March 2nd uh, with, a, with a presentation, a delegation from our consultant, Bioforest, who will be presenting the findings uh, of their report. In order to proceed with a spray program, uh, staff will be bringing forward a report with a recommendation to proceed with uh, extending their current assignment uh, to include the, the assisting staff in developing a spray program. And at that time, we'll develop spray blocks um, based on council's wish and decision on how we move forward and, and, and the quantity of spraying that we actually do. <clears throat> and um, the development of the spray blocks will be fairly quick. Um, so we are working against a tight timeline. That's that's 100% correct. Uh, we're confident that if we come um, to a, with a report in early March, uh, we'll still be able to uh, be well within our timelines of getting a successful program off in 2020. No, no, uh, Councillor. So through you, Mr. Mayor, to the CAO. Um, is this to just be received or are we picking options on on this today council has some choice before it whatever uh, you'll recall you're sitting as committee so whatever you decide tonight does not is not your final binding decision 
Whatever you decide this evening, though, one would anticipate will be heavily commented upon in the media and in the community at large. Uh, so it will give us the sort of, uh, on March 2nd, we anticipate having <coughs> Big Pardon, which is your next meeting, by the by, uh, that presentation from BioForest. Uh, and so you'll have the expert at the podium to whom you can pose questions. Uh, what this report is meant to signify are all of the realistic options that um, we thought in conjunction with uh, the resident experts um, sort of span the gamut from a million dollars to this more or less nothing to, to the 150 that's already been approved in, in various points in between. Uh, those are sort of the options that, that are present before you. We're obviously hoping to get some guidance, but whatever dis decision you make tonight, you could, of course, defer your decision two weeks, but that doesn't exactly give a lot for the public to react to one way or the other. So assuming you have the debate we anticipate you having this evening and come to some sort of decision, you yourselves will be the feedback mechanism, and in two weeks we'll have the expert here and presumably that night you're going to make a binding decision whether you vary what you do tonight or stick with it. Uh, of course, only time will tell. But that's the anticipated timeline. So that March 2nd will be the, the penultimate decision, whatever that may be. Um, uh, if I can, Council Hon, before you are talking, if I can comment. So on the report, my, my computer's crashed, so I don't have it in front of me. But first of all, I just want to uh, thank, uh, uh, the, it's uh, not actually a committee we had, but a group that worked on this. And I thought that the, uh, the way that uh, we gridded the town this year and did away with uh, urban and rural boundaries, uh, I, I thought that was a great step forward. Uh, gives us a lot more leeway in, in what our judgment is going to be and can stick more or less to where the egg masses are without defining uh, urban or rural boundaries. Um, I, I guess my question back to the uh, Director of Public Works, um, if this council chooses to go the, uh, the, the, the million dollars, um, is there, uh, and, and if we put that decision off till, uh, till March the 2nd, is there a uh, are, uh, a problem with getting the quantity of the material that we're going to need uh, if we go that route. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, staff have contacted the suppliers of the of this particular uh, agent. Um, in the event that council decides to do a spray program in the order of a million dollars, uh, we have uh, received some confirmation that yes, that material would be available to us. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's all for now. Uh, Councilor Hahn. Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, uh, to Director Marr. So earlier I asked about um, consulting with other municipalities to find out what they've done, and you said we are kind of a first of our kind. There's no, there's no other municipality out there that has a policy okay. as such for, for the moth. So that being said, have we reached out to the region, to the Conservation Authority, to Ministry of Environment, or our MAFRA to find out whether or not there's any opportunity for a grant or some sort of financial assistance? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I have uh, reached out to our Ministry Advisor, and she has given me a contact name for me to call. And so um, I just got that today, and I'm going to follow up with that because that was my exact question. You know, we're in a crisis here as far as a municipality of an operating budget of $20 million, and now we have an additional million dollars uh, to deal with our gypsy moss and to save our tree canopy, which is critical to this municipality. So I am following up on that. Thank you, because the, the way I feel right now is until we know a little bit more on that end, I, I'm not prepared to make a decision. Council Trophy. <clears throat> yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. This, just correct me if I'm wrong. It, look, it looks to me that we're going to be spraying 33 hectares of town property and 90 hectares of private property. Is that correct for a total of 123 hectares for the nine for the one million forty thousand dollars? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, no, that's that's not the case. 
Um, the total area that was identified as having severe uh, infestations, and, and our consultant used a threshold of 2,500 egg masses per hectare. That represented uh, 1,200 hectares across the town in both urban and rural areas. The, um, with respect to the um, 30 some odd acre hectares of, of public land and 90 hectares of uh, private is what we believe we could spray with our current approved budget of 150,000 uh, less the administration and, and program fees. Um, the 33 hectares were areas that are sensitive to the town with respect to our public parks uh, that were identified during the infestation survey of having severe infestations. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Stewart. Um, can somebody uh, give me an idea of, of how many hectares Pelham covers? Because um, I, I feel like even if we spend a million dollars on it, there, the, the cost will be spread among all the taxpayers, and a lot of them aren't going to benefit from it. And I can push my button. <laughs> <laughs> Through your, Mr. Mayor, um, the town of Pelham covers 125 square kilometers. Um, and I'm being embarrassed right now as Director of Public Works and a civil engineer. I'm doing a calculation to get the conversion into hectares. <laughs> 12,500 hectares. Multiplication of 10. Yeah. Through you, Mr. Mayor. So that estimate of one million forty thousand dollars, and if we did uh, twelve hundred hectares, that's going to be approximately three hundred and fifty dollars per acre. Uh, last year, we we're over the six hundred dollars per acre. I'm just wondering, is that number going to be closer, or when we come back, it might be well over a million as well? It, my basically, my question is: Is uh, did we get that number from by our? Um, the consultants are at the cost of one million forty thousand. Through you, Mr. Mayor. So, <clears throat> how we determined our estimates for for the options, we we discussed the options with Zimmer Air, uh, who are the applicators for the agent. Um, based on the infestation survey, there was twelve hundred hectares of of land that was identified as severely infested. Um, about half of that was within the urban area, and half of that was in the rural area. If you can recall, the um, areas that were sprayed within the urban area are about $650 per acre, and in the rural areas, they were down as close as closer to, to $150 per acre. So it's it's an average 50-50 to come up with the $350 per per acre. Uh, but we did contact Zimmer Air Services, and they um, they said as a as an estimate to use $880 per hectare for for a spray within the town limits. And that's what we've used to determine the estimates. Thank you. <clears throat> Through you, Mr. Mayor, to the director. How many trees would we lose if we're not aggressive with this program? Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, I wouldn't be able to comment specifically on that. Um, that would be a good question uh, at our March 2nd meeting uh, with our consultant, Bioforest, and I'm not sure if they would actually be able to answer that question specifically. Uh, one thing we do know, and, and based on the report that we received from our consultant, is that um, trees normally can withstand uh, two to three years of heavily infestation, um, particularly in the rural areas and the wooded lots. Uh, those trees are more resilient. They seem to do better. Um, trees within the urban area that are uh, subject to other stresses, such as uh, road salts um, and, and, and urban, um, the urban environment, um, those trees and those tree canopies would be more susceptible to uh, damage during severe infestations. Through you, Mr. Mayor, how much would one of those trees, if we're responsible for dead trees, how much would it cost us to uh, take one tree down on an average? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, depending on the actual size of the tree, uh, that cost could range anywhere from uh, $1,200 to $2,500 per tree. 
so we have a choice either spray or cut the trees down or dead trees uh, yes three mr mayor <clears throat> um, the infestations again they're they're cyclical um, so there are times where there are or there are times when trees are more heavily infested um, treating with spray is is considered the most effective uh, operation and the effective method of of controlling uh, the infestations and and be able to um, prevent tree mortality um, but yes um, in the event that uh, treatments are not made uh, especially within the urban area there would be uh, the the likelihood of 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 losing trees and those would have to be removed uh, by town staff or contractors through you mr mayor one more question how much would it cost a resident to do it privately by themselves if they end up hiring a, a private person or they do it themselves how much would that cost to you mr mayor um so as part of this policy as well there will be an education piece and we will be um, working with uh with staff or sorry, working with the residents on on a on what can be done and what preventative measures can be done. There are there are different things you can do. If you were going to um, specifically uh, spray individual trees on your property and hire a contractor to come in and do that from the ground, you're looking at anywhere between 150 to uh, 200 250 dollars per tree. Um, so that's that is kind of the going rate. There are also some other um, alternatives out there um, that you can do. You can do tree banding. Um, there are actually uh, injections that you can make into the tree to, to help prevent the, uh, the gypsy moth infestation. So there, we'll be working with our consultant uh, and getting the information out to the public with respect to um, different uh, preventative measures that, that the public can do um, to help save their trees. Thank you. Any other questions? Council Trophy. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. Will the, con the consultant be available for uh, questions on March 2nd, at the March 2nd meeting? Is there plans to have them here? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, yes. So uh, we do have received a delegation request for March 2nd. So uh, Bioforest, a representative will be here, the actual person that did the infestation survey and was out uh, in the field doing the work. Um, that individual prepared the report authored the report and they are presenting on March 2nd so you have an opportunity to ask them uh, questions at that meeting. Uh, Councilor Hildebrand. Uh, through you Mr. Mayor, there's one other consideration that the res some of the residents uh, contact me on and that's people with severe allergies. I know we say this is organic, it doesn't cause anybody any problems, but I'm telling you these people couldn't be convinced. There was no convincing these people, and they, they definitely are not in favor of having any spray near their property. Obviously, the people I represent are the people in Ward 3, and they're all of their, in a very urban area. So uh, th these people didn't appreciate the approach the town took. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> um, that's a probably a good question for our consultant. Uh, to, to discuss the the effects of the uh, the BTK agent um, one thing I do know and I've read um, is that uh, people do develop an allergy to the actual uh, gypsy moth to the hairs on the on the on the caterpillars um, and and that will if there's if there's a heavy infestation that will affect uh, the respiratory with um, with areas around heavily infested areas Um, so the comment that I would like to make is, um, is uh, my old age, I forgot it. <laughs> no, uh, I guess um, I don't think this council is ready to make the, uh, the decision tonight until we uh, go March 2nd. So the, the question is, um, can, is, is, can you continue? Uh, is, is there anything we can do to continue going forward? Uh, but until I get, perhaps uh, that's a silly question because until you know exactly what we're doing, I, I suppose uh, staff is at a stalemate. To you, Mr. Mayor. Um, <clears throat> as it stands right now, um, we've received the final report from Bioforest. We know what the level of infestation is. Um, we were surprised by the fact 
of the level infestation that we've had throughout the town. Um, so at this point in time, uh, we're still we're still in good standing. We 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 do have some time, but we need we need to be diligent. We do need some direction by council with how we are going to proceed with a spray program. Um, there will be a report that is in front of council on March 2nd, which will <clears throat> consider the options of extending the original assignment for Bioforest to include the development of a spray program and to help town staff administer a spray program. Um, that will be presented on the 2nd. Uh, that will allow us to keep moving forward um, with, with a 2020 spray program. So um, between now and March 2nd, um, there isn't much uh, um, further work to do, uh, but we we do need some direction from council with respect to um, the the extent of the program that we're going to undertake in 2020. And we can do that on March 2nd. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Through Mr. Mayor, yes, yeah, yeah. that'll give us sufficient time to uh, move forward with the developing a spray program, have the public consultation. Um, one thing we one thing we do want to <clears throat> make clear is that last year staff conducted a spray program and there was also many other residents that had uh, private spraying done. With the town, um, we're able to get permits and we will be presenting a bylaw to council which will allow staff to go ahead and administer a spray program without getting the written consent from adjacent property owners. Uh, people that, will, that wish to undertake a spray program uh, that aren't part of the town's program um, there's more legwork on their part to get approvals in place uh, from the ministry and, and to be able to get a successful program on off. So our intent is to uh, get in front of council once we have direction on how we're proceeding and what the, uh, um, what the funding is going to be for the program. Then we'll work with our consultant to develop a spray program, get that in front of council. Uh, you will be advised as to what staff intends to do for a spray program with respect to the spray blocks and get your endorsement on that and then move forward with the program. But we want to make sure we get that in front of council early enough so that if there are property owners in the public that <clears throat> um, are not going to be part of the spray program, they have the opportunity to do something on their own uh, and have time to do that. Excellent. I remember from that public meeting we had uh, last fall that Zimmer Air said that there, there's no way that they would participate in what we had set up last year. That they, they want to come in here and do big blocks. They don't want to be starting to go up and down streets. Is that okay? correct? Through you, Mr. Mayor, I, I believe um, the, the contractors will, will do whatever we ask them to do, but uh, it'll be reflected in pricing. So I think that the intent is if, uh, if we're able to um, develop spray blocks that um, are efficient, then we will, as a town, benefit from reduced pricing based on the development of the spray spray zone blocks. Great, thank so you. Efficient. I wonder that uh, either way, whatever council decides on uh, March second, we're going to have to roll out a uh, public information program. Uh, I wonder if we should be is is a premature to do that, getting it in place now. And uh, maybe I'm wrong. I, I I don't know. It just seems like. Uh, uh, I hate to do everything in May, and then uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know. May, so, answer, what you, what's your feeling on that? Can we get the ball out there and say, "Listen, this is going to be a massive program," or do we have to wait until we see where we're going? I, I, I guess I probably answered my own question. To you, Mr. Mayor. So, <clears throat> staff already is working on um, uh, education piece, and we're looking at getting that information out to the public. Um, discussions were had around getting it out for the home show, having it part of our community guide uh, to get some FAQs out there so that uh, the residents are aware of the issue um, and can react and respond accordingly. So um, as we move forward with the, with the spray program as well, we will have public open houses that um, allow the public to come in and, and we can kind of show the public what we're doing, where we're spraying, what to expect, and what they can do as well to uh, to help uh, mitigate the negative impacts of the gypsy moth. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Councillor Hahn. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, not so much a question, just a statement, uh, and, and further to what you were mentioning earlier. I think that it's not even too late now, or too early now, I think that we should actually put something on our website right now, because I'm already starting to get uh, questions in regards to where we're at with Gypsy Moth, just to let people know, um, that aren't actually going onto our website and looking through this information, just to let them know that the discussion has started. 
Thank you. Uh, any other comments? Uh, not seed any. Uh, let me confer with the... Uh, So the motion is to uh, receive the report and that a reserve fund be established and the necessary bylaw be prepared for that reserve fund and that the policy be approved. There has been no direction given uh, with regard to the extent of the program. Okay. So, so as the uh, clerk says, we, we pass this motion, and then uh, March the second, when we have the uh, um, bioforest uh, representative here to ask questions to uh, council, will probably be more comfortable uh, at that time to go ahead. So this motion, uh, the committee of the whole receive report number uh, 2020-0017 Town of Pelham Gypsy Moth Policy and the 2020 Gypsy Moth Management Options and that a Forest Health Reserve Fund be established and the necessary bylaw be prepared and that committee of the whole recommend that council approve the Public Works Gypsy Moth Management Policy S801-14 uh, which would of course be open for discussion on March the 2nd. Uh, all those in favor of this uh, report, uh, all, all, of, uh, in, all those in favor of this motion? No. Oh. Sorry, when you're talking about that policy, or I mean the reserve, is there a set number that we're looking at per year or? Uh, Ms. Mr. CAO? Yeah, so through you, Mr. Oh, Mayor. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, did you no. want to answer that? Um, so right now it's just to establish a specific reserve fund for the gypsy moth so let's just say this year we have one hundred fifty thousand dollars in the 2020 budget and we only spent a hundred then that 50 would go automatically into that reserve so it's just to have a place to put money in and so if every year we allocate funds to the gypsy moth let's just say we keep 150 every year and we have four years in a row that we don't need it it goes to the reserve and the reason why we want a reserve fund because with a reserve fund you actually have to have the cash so we want to make sure that if it's $150,000 in the reserve fund there's $150,000 of cash for that um, for the gypsy moth thank you thank you, thank you for that uh, clarification uh, I guess it, I didn't call the vote. Did I call the vote? Okay. okay. So um, uh, I'll call the vote again. Uh, all those uh, in favor of this motion, as it reads, um, all those in favor? Okay. All those opposed? Excellent. We will uh, look forward to this on March the 2nd. Um, so we have our motion put forward by Councillor Stewart that the correspondence received from Niagara Region, uh, Catherine Hammer Mill, Hammer Mill, Director of Waste Management Services, dated December 10th, 2019, regarding the confirmation of Pelham's enhanced and op optional enhanced services for Niagara Region's new waste management collection contract be received and that committee receive and approve report number 2020-0018 and that committee recommends for council to endorse the proposed recommendations from town staff regarding the town of Pelham's enhanced and optional enhanced waste collection services for the Niagara Region's new waste management collection contract and that Niagara Region be advised that the town of Pelham requests to continue with its current enhanced services as follows. One, two days per week for public space litter bin and public space recycling bin collection inside designated business areas, DBAs known as, 
and one day per week for public space litter bin and public space recycling bin collection outside the DBAs at an annual estimated cost of $18,825.60, including that GS, GST. Containerized garbage collection at multi-residential buildings and municipal facilities, excuse me, at an annual estimated cost of $14,195.52, including uh, net HST, and that Niagara Region be advised that the Town of Pelham will require the optional enhanced services of Number three, in-ground collection at municipal facilities, i.e. Town Hall, the Meridian Community Center, and Centennial Park, at an estimated cost of $122 per receptacle stop for crane collection. And that, Niagara Region be advised, that the, that the Town of Pelham is not interested in the optional enhanced service of bulky goods collection at MR buildings with seven or more units and mixed use properties with one or more residential unit at an annual estimated cost of $41,009.28, including HST. Comments and questions on this report. Councilor Hildebrand. Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, I, I'm going to make a motion that this report be referred back to staff and that staff report back to council on the following item. Number one, explore other options for providing litter bin collection, including other municipal, municipality best practices regarding the placement and necessity of residential bins. Review actual recyclability of products, making necessary process changes, including detailed firm bids for in-ground services, and obtain firm quotes on containerized garbage collection. Thank you. Any comments on Councillor Hildebrand's? Councillor Hildebrand. Uh, definitely, I have a lot of com com comments. As you probably heard, uh, I was an engineer, and my, my corporation engineered waste energy operations. Uh, I've got many plants with my engineering numbers are on. One of the closest ones is the Niagara Falls, New York one. It's called Waste to Energy. I know there's a lot of political issues with regards to waste to energy, and there's only one municipality that has adopted what I would recommend, and that's Durham, York. But anyway, Durham, York has a similar plant to what I engineered in Niagara Falls, New York. That plant eats 2,250 tons of waste per day. It produces electrical power, it produces steam, which is sold also lo locally. The metal that comes out of it is recycled, and the refuse or whatever else comes out is clear landfill. And that's exactly what Durham York is doing with their garbage. Now I want to go on to where we stand with regards to garbage and recycling in general. In 2016, Bill 151 was established. It was an act to enable the Resource Recovery and Circular Economy Act of 2016 and the Waste Diversion Transition Act to repeal the Waste Diversion Act of 2002. This bill makes producers responsible for recycling costs of the waste they create. It has already come into effect in 2019, and by 2023 and 25, the Blue Box program will be replaced. Be replaced with what? We don't know. Each municipality, that's the region, has to notify the government of the, or the government will in, select a date when it comes into effect in the municipality. At the operational level, where I'm a member, with four other regional operational managers, five community experts that have been enlisted through ads in the paper and people from the community applying, and four municipalities, the politicians, of which I'm one, I can tell you this committee does not fully understand the complexity of this legislation 
nor how producers are going to change the face of recycling as we know it and the operations at the regional and municipal level. These managers of the region don't know what's going to happen because obviously we've got problems. There's challenges since China and other nations in the Far East have refused this type of product, the acceptance rate has become far more stringent. I can tell you the city of Hamilton had warehouses full of cardboard that all of a sudden they thought they were going to recycle, and you know where they ended up? In the dump. Because if they're wet, if they're contaminated, you know where it goes? To the dump. We can all sit here and think we're doing such a great recycling, and even at my house, my, my wife is a super recycler, but I can tell you, most of the stuff that we're putting in the bins is not going where we think it, think it should go. The pot, for cardboard products to be accepted by the purchaser, inspectors have rejected for one straw or one got bottle cap of foreign object, the bale. And you know what happens to that bale? It goes to the dump and the, the general public does not know these facts. The basic contamination rate goal right now is 3%. Previous to that, we were trying to make five, we were trying to make five to 6%. This is done by machines and humans. It's very difficult. They're not sure how they're even gonna get near this target. Uh, our next meeting is gonna be at the recycling plants to try and determine what, exa what exactly has happened. So, just because the producers are calling this stuff recyclable doesn't mean it has a home. Most of the stuff ends up in the landfill anyway. The landfill is, we're wondering right now, even whether you've got a box with tape on it, you know, all the tape labels and all this kind of stuff, where, where exactly is that going? These types of questions we're asking and we're trying to get answers to because I was talking to them this, as of this last Friday. The problem is we can spend a lot of money thinking we're doing the right thing and it all ends up in the end at a place where it all accumulates. I don't know if you've ever been to some of these places but I know Canada but Waste has a big site off Cushman Road and I can tell you what happens to the trucks that come in. They got all get put in one big bin, and I suspect they're going over to Niagara Falls, New York. I haven't followed the trucks. I can tell you where our trucks are going. Our garbage trucks, which have the, blue, the green bin and the garbage in it, are going to Walker's Quarries. How it's handled there, I can't tell you for sure, because I've not followed them through. But that's part of our committee's thing that we're doing. Now let's go on to what the region has chosen. The region has chosen two contractors, GFL, and uh, the other one is Miller. Both of them are basically Toronto firms. The members of this committee that I'm on have not seen or read the new proposed contracts, nor have these contractors, have, have they been visited or seen from their pros prospect how they're actually handling the stuff that goes in. The paperwork will all tell you what they're doing. They're all perfect, as any guy said, given a proposal would place in a proposal to meet the regional requirements. Let's talk about the facts that the, what the region has agreed to. The region has agreed to a base rate increase of 11.5% for waste. That's 11.5%. Plus an additional price index increase for diesel fuel and the consumer price index. I can tell you this for a fact that Few companies have the equipment to handle a Moloch in-ground garbage collection system. The members of the committee have not seen the new contract, nor know which contract will be providing the enhanced services as, re as requested by this town. Niagara Falls, I don't know if you've heard, is trying to get out of the contract with the region right now. They want to handle their own waste. The basis for their complaint is, over the next three years, the cost of handling waste coming to the Niagara Falls community is 35%. That's 35%, and they're telling the region they're getting half the service for 35% <coughs> price increase. So, so there's other communities as well that I'm being told are question, now questioning. They haven't come to the table yet, and I'm not sure the region sits at the regional table, and our director sits with the regional directors. We don't sit at that level. We sit at the operational level. 
I know that Niagara on the Lake, Wayne Fleet, West Lincoln have questioned these costs as well. I'm not sure what's happening at the mayoral level or at the director level. That's another level. I'm not prepared to go ahead and have our contract for hauling garbage go up by 35% over the next three years and have extra services provided by the region when I think we should take another serious look with my motions to see what we're going to do because I don't think that's what the residents would expect me to do. Thank you. So, uh, Councillor, I'll, I'll play a little bit of a uh, devil's advocate here, if I may. Sure. So, I've been to the facility in, in uh, Durham region, and you're right, it's a great, great facility. Tons and tons go in there. But if, unless they've changed since I was there in uh, 2016, they don't take outside garbage. Or, am I right, or am I wrong on that? They only accept garbage, as far as we know, from Durham and York, yes. period. Yes, yes. So, so, so that option really isn't part of no, the No, no, that, that was a municipality decision by those municipalities. That's how they were going to handle their waste. Yeah. That's unusual for Ontario. They're the only municipality in Ontario that decide, decided to do so. Yeah. From a political standpoint, from my bass back background, trying to compete with the political pull of some of the big players that have big holes in the ground, corporations don't want to go into that market. Okay. So, so I do know that the Niagara region and Hamilton did look at an incinerator uh, probably about 10 years ago and, and the truth of the matter is is we don't provide, we don't generate enough garbage to be economically feasible in, in that uh, realm. So it, it has been looked at but we, we would have to bring garbage from other regions uh, and of course uh, if, if anyone's here for any length of time, we can remember when they were going to build an incinerator in St. Anne's, and uh, and that was all different ball game. So uh, I, I appreciate uh, the, the motion, uh, sir. I, I really don't know uh, what the options are for this town. Uh, I mean, surely we're uh, you're not suggesting we go out and buy trucks. You just want to look at see if there's other providers out there. Is, is that the, uh, correct? I want to go out for price extras. What I want to do is take a close look at what our garbage really consists of because I suspect a lot of the stuff at the MCC really, you know, we're going to we're going to now suggest that we pick up three three or four different times and every time we're going to pick up with a different truck for a different product. But I'm not so sure that the product that we're picking up really is recyclable in the end. Now, the problem I see is I'm not sure whether the staff has enough time to do this kind of work and my, if that's the issue I would su su suggest that the US committee have a, an expansion of their committee and we see whether we have residential experts that would like to help us on this committee because I know the region went out to help our, our committee and we've got five experts and th these guys are really enthusiastic about garbage. <laughs> you know, it's, it's hard to imagine, but it's it's like the cannabis group. You got you guys are amazing, and, the, and these guys have the same passion for garbage and recycling. They're 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 an amazing group. Right? I'm telling you. Yeah, so thank you for that, uh, Councilor Hildeman. So uh, I'll go back to that again to the Director of Public Works. The contract, I believe, uh, I know with the two suppliers, uh, doesn't start till October give or take, October 11th, whatever it is. Um, so uh, I guess I'll let you, uh, um, your, your feelings on this motion um, are, uh, is it going to affect uh, our ultimate goal with the region? Or did they, do we have a timeline on this that we have to get back to them or, or do we have some uh, leeway on this? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, um, the region was requesting a response back uh, from the municipalities um, by February. Actually, they wanted January. Uh, we told them that we weren't able to get a report in front of council uh, until February. And so um, at this point in time, I do believe there are still other municipalities in the region that haven't responded back to the region yet. Um, as uh, Councillor Hildebrand had mentioned, 
there is a concern with respect to uh, one of the municipalities uh, opting out and, and um, not being part of the region's waste collection contract. Um, there, I've been told that there's a report that regional staff will be presenting to regional council on March 11th. <clears throat> that will lay out uh, what the impacts would be if uh, Niagara Falls does in fact decide to separate themselves and not be part of the region waste contract. Um, so that could affect uh, that could affect the pricing that the other municipalities um, receive. <clears throat> um, with respect to looking at options for litter bin collection, uh, we have not gone out um, for the, just specifically dealing with the enhanced services now. Uh, for the litter bin collection, um, we have not gone out and, and tried to solicit pricing from other uh, company private companies. Um, one of the advantages that <clears throat> you get when you have the region contractor doing it is that they're driving down the road. So they don't service all of our litter bins, but they'll service the litter bins that are on the route. So they're already there, they're picking up garbage and they, they, they charge us extra to pick up our litter bins that are located along the, 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 the routes that they carry already. <clears throat> we looked at doing that work in house. We do not have the staff resources or abilities to be able to do that. And in fact, based on, on our estimations, in order for us to do that, uh, we would probably need an additional two staff and a truck, uh, a one-ton truck, which um, would the region does it for roughly a quarter of the cost of what we could do it for in-house. But again, we have not gone out to uh, another uh, provider to see if there's other options available to us on the litter bin side of things or the containerized garbage side of things. We did look into additional um, pricing for uh, the pickup of the uh, recycling and the garbage uh, for the, with the in-ground units, the Mollocks. Um, there are, correct, uh, Councillor Hildebrand was correct in the fact that there are only uh, a limited number of companies that are able to provide that service with the equipment. <clears throat> um, one of the other companies that we looked at uh, getting pricing from, um, they were in, right now, so right now our, our current service provider is providing the service for just over $16,000 and that's the service, the MCC, the Town Hall and Centennial Park Mollocks. The region contract, we're expecting that to be somewhere between twenty-five and thirty thousand dollars through their their quoted prices. Um, we have some reassurance from the region that they will, in fact, uh, pick up the different recycling different recycling streams and the garbage separately. So we can only assume that they would be recycled properly. Um, the other quote we got was in the order of fifty thousand dollars from another. From another company to provide the same service uh, that we're receiving now. So we have looked into some, to some pricing on that. Staff were more than happy to bring a report back with respect to a, a more detailed analysis on respect to those um, different options available to us. But my my react my initial reaction would be that um, we would be getting the best bang for the buck with the using the region contractor. I'd just like to make a comment re regarding litter bins. I'm not against litter bins, but I live near a litter bin. And unfortunately, what I see happening at this litter bin is the, the residents use that as an overflow for their garbage container. And uh, that's not what it's designed for. It's right by a park. I'm not, I'm not sure what the philosophy is in having litter bins what the philosophy the town had when they established litter bins by the parks. Because people go there with their kids to play. In my area, that's where they're there. Not, they're not putting the garbage in. The people that are putting the garbage in are the people that are all over the community walking down or driving down. They see a bin, they open it up and chuck it full. That's what's happening to the litter bins in my area. So I'm not sure what we have is what the philosophy was behind the placement of the bins and why we have those bins. Trophy. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. If we go ahead with uh, Councillor Hildebrand's uh, motion, what are our options? And do we uh, defer this to a couple weeks till you get more pricing, or like I don't, I don't understand it. I see that there really isn't no option. You've already done the investigation, and the region is the cheapest. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, like I said, we have not uh, gone through an extensive process of receiving additional pricing for uh, servicing our litter bins, our containerized garbage collection. Um, we have done some more research into the in-ground uh, Mollocks, uh, the, the pickup and disposal of that. 
uh, material. Um, staff can definitely come back with a more detailed uh, report, which will identify some of those costs. Um, the region did want us, the, the councilor is correct in saying, or, or the mayor, sorry, the new contract comes into place in October of 2020. So the region is basically looking to get some uh, assurances from the municipalities on uh, their buy-in on moving forward uh, with respect to the general waste collection contract and then which additional services we want to provide. Um, that being said, there are some <clears throat> issues still outstanding with the region with respect to uh, one of the municipalities wanting to uh, divulge themselves from the region contract and they're taking a report on March 11th which will kind of lay out um, what the impacts would be to other municipalities um, based on um, that particular municipality opting out of the region contract. So although although the region is looking for us to get an answer back as soon as possible, I think it would be fair to say that uh, we could uh, uh, come back with some a report with some additional um, additional look at some of the litter bin collection, containerized bin collection, and the in-ground uh, Moloch removal and disposal, and also wait to see what uh, type of impact uh, uh, it would have if Niagara Falls decides to separate themselves from the region and their contract. Through you, Mr. Mayor, to the director. All the garbage goes to re uh, regional sites, right? Garbage goes to regional dumps. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I, I'm not sure exactly where they dispose. I do believe they do use the regional sites. Um, and there's a charge to that. The, so the, there is an additional charge for disposal of, uh, of based on with the hand services, yes, correct. So if we went to a second party, yes, it'd be cheaper then. Then the region will just tax us on the other side of bringing garbage to their sites. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor, I'm not sure exactly what the details are, but I would be more than happy to find that out and include that as part of that report. I, I can tell you where all the garbage goes. It goes to Walker's Quarries. That's where the garbage goes. This recycling products, if they're quality recycling products, that's the key. And that's, that's what's so very stringent. The problem is selling, selling those and having a market. And the buyers are not the same buyers as they used to be. So it isn't a, isn't a matter that, like our contractor who's handling the Moloch system right now, he's going to the Walker dump too, just like the region's going. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. Then I think I would uh, support Councillor Hildebrand's uh, motion at this time, and then at least it will give us uh, staff time to come back with some additional pricing and to also see if that other municipality will um, elect not to be part of the waste management uh, collection system through the region and see what that pricing would be, and then we can compare. I think waiting until March 11th won't hurt nothing. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, any more questions on this? If not, I will call the motion on the, uh, I will call the uh, vote on the motion. Uh, on the amendment, I'm sorry. On the motion to refer. Yeah, on the motion, on, on the councillor's uh, motion, right? Yeah, okay. So this is the uh, motion brought forward by Councillor Hildebrand that the report be referred back to staff and that staff report back to council on the following item explores other options for providing litter bin collection, including other municipality best practices regarding the placement necessity of residential bins, reviews actual recyclability of products, making necessary process changes, including detailed firm bids for in-ground services, and obtains detailed firm quotes on containerized garbage collection. Any further debate on this? Not seeing any, call the vote. All those in favor on this amendment? Any opposed? The amendment carries. So motion to refer is a main motion, so that just replaces this motion. Okay. Let's refer fine. back to staff. Yeah. Okay. Motion put forward by Councillor Stewart that committee receive report number 2020-0015 and recommend to council that council approve the revised Summerfest terms of reference.
comment and questions on this report? Councilor Chofi. Yeah, I think it's important to have a good, strong uh, committee there for Summerfest, and uh, if we need to replace the two people, I think it's very important that it gets done. Thank you. Any other comments? If not, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion put forward by Councilor Corr no. that this regular meeting of council, oh, I'm sorry, regular meeting of committee, be adjourned until the next regular meeting scheduled for March 2nd, 2020, following council. All those in favor? All those opposed? This meeting is adjourned.